amounts of it. And, um, and I think there's, but they need to understand that, that soda is not food. It's like candy. It's something like you don't have every day. You don't have the meals. Uh, it's special occasion food. And I think that distinction, too, is something kids understand. There are special things they get. Sometimes they get dessert. Sometimes they get candy. But soda, which what had that status when we were kids, now is, uh, is everyday food for a lot of people. And it's no wonder it's cheaper than water. You know, it's cheaper than bottled water. It's cheaper than milk. Um, and uh, what an absurd situation that is. Um, and and you know, it's 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 something that's very important to address. Um, uh, we were talking earlier about the incidence of type two diabetes, and, uh, which is really spiraling out of control, and it's an enormous um, threat to the healthcare system because it's so expensive to treat, and it's just so immiserating for people who, who get it. Um, but that reducing soda consumption would take a real big bite out of it. Uh, so. Well, this will either make you very alarmed or very proud. Um, but I was recently at a UCSF conference, and uh, one of the speakers gave about an hour long lecture to, there were probably 200 internists and family practitioners about nutrition, and a lot of biochemistry and so forth. And at the end, he says, Here's what you need to know. And they were your three. Really? Steve yeah. Food? Not too much, mostly plants. Right. And then he added, and some fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I would add that. Or I think it's under food, though. Eat food. Yeah. Um, so, hey, well, hey. that's great. I know that's going to be on my gravestone unless I come up with something better. <laughs> <laughs> but just what about the fish thing? Is, is fish, is, uh, is that, you know, it's not a mostly plant, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> There are plant eaters, though. Uh, no, fish is a really important part of the diet, and uh, it's it's a tricky part of the diet because uh, the sustainability of fish is, is really in is really in question right now. There's very little fish that you can feel good about eating from an environmental standpoint. Um, the fishery, many fisheries are are cracking. We're kind of lucky in California that we have some sustainable fisheries on our coast because. Of very good management decisions taken a long time ago. Um, but in much of the world, it's, it's uh, an environmental disaster. Um, but I think there's no question that that's one of the healthiest things you can eat. And, and, and for us, it's taken the place of most of the meat in our diet. Um, it's expensive, unfortunately. Not everybody can afford to eat fish. Um, and fish, fish that were, fishes that were cheap when I was young are now luxury items. Um, you know, there used to be lots of you know, there, there was salmon, tuna, and these expensive fishes, but then there were all these other white flesh fishes that cost very, very little to compete with chicken, and now they're not. Um, and that's a shame. And that's to do with their, their rareness. I sometimes feel like you're forced to either make a decision of, you know, buying some fish that will soon be extinct or a farm raised fish. Right. And farm raised fish have problems um, in that the feed that we give them is often wild fish. So, and, and the fish at the bottom of the food chain. So we, we catch large amounts of, of little fish, uh, sardines and anchovies and things like that, and we grind them up into pellets and feed them to farm fish. So you're not really helping that much. And then the farm fish often have lots of antibiotics, at least in the case of a lot of farm salmon. I think one of the great challenges in the next few years will be to develop sustainable forms of agriculture the equivalent of a highly you know, diversified farm, such as the ones I described in uh, Omnivore's Dilemma. We can do it, and, there, and there's starting to be some really interesting work being done on aquaponics, for example, these systems that grow fish in rotation with vegetables, um, and that use as a feed, and I think this is the key, fixing the feed, they're figuring out how to use insects um, to feed fish in captivity. And you know, there's a lot of talk about crickets are the new protein, and, and that we're going to all be eating bugs soon. I think a much better idea is to feed the bugs to the animals we want to eat. <laughs> they like them already. Chickens love insects, and fish love insects. And so, soldier fly larva and, and earthworms, I realize they're not insects, but that, that you can feed those to fish. And when we master that, I think we were on our way to inventing uh, a sustainable agriculture that will produce all this really healthy protein. 
you know, in Christian